Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin, and today we're going to talk about some of the biggest uh, Bitcoin whales in the world. Um, these are people that are pretty much all billionaires that have in invested heavily in Bitcoin. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is Jeff Bezos. I don't really have a lot to say about him. Y'all pretty much know who he is. He's the CEO of Amazon, and he um, is worth somewhere around like $190 billion. So he actually invested about 9.5 billion into Bitcoin in the last few weeks. And the significance of that is it helped drive the price up a little bit. But but, but what's more important is it's starting to get mass adopted by a lot of um, other billionaires. Um, and, and another one that's really bullish on, on cryptocurrency, um, and, and I just heard about that this morning, is Mark Cuban. You guys know him from, uh, from that show. So, um, Another one is Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, a lot of people don't know that he actually owns a million Bitcoin. Um, and he started mining it back around 2009 when, when, it, when it first started and he didn't have any competition mining it so he was easily able to mine a million of them. Um, and the significance of that is that someday he'll be able to cash out. Um, but he, just, he could have done a lot more but he decided to leave a lot of the supply for other miners because um, he didnn't want to take all the profits. It, it, the, the whole purpose of him creating this decentralized currency was to allow others to share the profits with them. Um, the next one is Michael Saylor. He's actually, in my opinion, he's, he's actually one of my mentors and he's actually the best, um, most astute follower of being a Bitcoin maximalist you'll ever meet. I mean, he's totally 100% into buying other Bitcoin and to my knowledge, he doesn't have any Ethereum or other altcoins. He's 100% Bitcoin. Um, he owns a company called MicroStrategies Incorporated, and uh, their stock went up like $125 just within the last, you know, trading session. Um, he made his first $25 million uh, purchase, and then other companies started following, like like the company Square and Tesla and and Mass Mutual, and they started buying them and putting it into their their basically their corporate trust. Um, or corporate reserves um, into Bitcoin. And, and they did that because it's a good store of value. Um, right now, Mike, Michael Saylor owns about 100, and, or his company, MicroStrategy Incorporated, owns about 193,000 Bitcoin. So he's probably one of the biggest holders other than Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, Tesla, they actually, about a year ago, they owned 42,000 Bitcoin. Um, that's um, Elon Musk company and um, for whatever reason they sold a lot of their stack and now they own less than 10,000 now So apparently Elon Musk is somewhat bullish on Bitcoin But he's not fanatical about it because if he was fanatical about it He would he would have held it for a long lot longer than that um, The other one another whale is the Winklevoss twins You've probably seen the movie social network about 10 years ago. They or 12 years ago or whenever they put it out he was in the he, they were basically, they basically claimed to be the founder of Facebook and that Mark Zuckerberg stole from him. And, and they actually ended up, you know, taking it to court and going through a lawsuit. And from that lawsuit, they got $65 million from this lawsuit. And they took uh, about, I think it was, um, I, I'm not sure exactly how much, but they um, purchased, oh, it was $11 million. They purchased Bitcoin for $10 a piece with the $11 million. And they're actually believed to be the first cryptocurrency billionaires, other, other than Satoshi Nakamoto, of course. Um, they hold about 100,000 BTC at this time, and, and it's worth about $4 billion. So they're, they're definitely big time whales. Um, we'll see what happens to them in the future. I know they had something to do with BlockFi and about 25 other ventures they've launched um, in the crypto space. Um, and I... I, I know BlockFi went bankrupt. I was actually part of that and had some Ethereum in it. And it's a long story short, but I didn't respond quick enough and I only got maybe 25% of what I should have gotten back, but that's okay. Life goes on. Um, Tim Draper, um, he actually bought 30,000 uh, Bitcoin during, during an auction by the US Marshal's office. And each Bitcoin he purchased was $632 each. Uh, and the total Bitcoin that he purchased was $18.75 uh, million. He was actually a victim of the Mt. Gox scam, if you've ever, um, if, you, if you know anything about that, you can always Google it. But um, a lot of people got taken in the Mt. Gox scam. I had a personal friend that had at least 500 Bitcoin he owned and it got lost in the Mt. Gox uh, hack. 
Um, so, but now, um, Tim Draper's personal uh, reserve of Bitcoin is, is, is over a billion dollars. So he's another whale. Um, Michael Novogratz, you've probably heard of him. Um, it was trading for, well, in 2013, um, he invested seven million of his own money. And um, he's actually known as the Forrest Gump of Bitcoin. And um, he, because he came in at the, he was at the right place at the right time. So he owns almost 13,000 uh, Bitcoin. And that's just a tremendous amount. Uh, the, the last person I wanted to talk about today was uh, Jack Dorsey and Block. He owns a company called Block. Um, he thinks, he believes in Bitcoin on, on kind of a social level that it's going to provide world peace and replace the U.S. dollar. He feels that U.S. dollar is collapsing and that Bitcoin is going to be a legitimate replacement for that and adopted worldwide. Um, and he could be right. Um, his company, Block, owns just over 8,000 Bitcoins. And he, he didn't get in early in the game as a lot, a lot of these other guys. He, he came in when it was about 24,000 per coin. Um, so I actually, in 2018, I actually bought one for $3,600 and I was lucky enough to hodl it. And the only reason I didn't sell it is because it always, I was busy working. I had other stuff to do and I'm so glad I hodled it now because now it's worth more. So, um, my suggestion is to, you know, these guys are just examples of, what you could do with Bitcoin if you got in early, but it's not too late. The thing I tell people is even if the price of Bitcoin is $500,000, is it worth getting into? I would say yes, because a bank's not gonna pay you anything if you give them $10,000. If you put it in at 500 grand and it goes to 2 million in the next five years, you know, that's four times what you put in. If you put in 10 grand, that's 40 grand. That pays a lot of bills. So that's what I tell people, you know, in, in, in crypto, the last thing I'm going to say about this is crypto is a personal journey. Everybody has to decide how they're going to embark on their journey and, and, and how they're going to do it. You know, you could DCA on a daily basis. You, DCA stands for dollar cost averaging. You could DCA daily. You could DCA weekly. You could do it biweekly or monthly or even yearly. Um, I like to do it daily because I like to interact with the market every day, even if it's a small purchase, because it makes me feel like I'm... I'm accomplishing something um, and I am um, because like right now for example I invest $53 a day I believe in seven to eight years that that $53 a day will probably materialize into $800 a day you know in, in the next few cycles so so you, you got to have a plan execute it the way you want to execute it and um, you just enjoy life and, and you make crypto a part of your daily plan and that's my advice um, I have a beginner's crypto tutorial that you can uh, view and um, it should be in the description below or you can and then you can visit our website it's a free tutorial you don't we don't I don't want your card I don't want your email unless you want to give it to us and uh, we accept donations but we don't demand them um, you could start learning within literally within 30 seconds after getting to that website so anyways I want you to have uh, an incredible rest of the weekend and I'll talk to you soon thank you